Um, my name is André Thier. I'm a uh, network uh, performance engineer within Bouygues Telecom's IP engineering department. And I'm uh, glad to be here today to talk to you about uh, Nokia's cloud intelligence solution by DeepField. So this uh, conference is an appropriate forum to announce our recent decision to select and deploy cloud intelligence. And as you may have already understood from Hamid's and Q's presentations, cloud intelligence provides that first base functionality of visibility of services on an operator network. So let's start off with a bit of info on Bouygues Telecom. So created in 1994, it's part of the Bouygues Group. The group is active in 98 countries working on construction projects with um, Bouygues Construction and Colas. Uh, real estate with Big Immobilier, telecoms, obviously, and uh, media with TF1. As you may already know, France is a very competitive market uh, with four operators, and Big Telecom doesn't differentiate itse itself uh, only by its name, which is uh, super easy to spell and simple to pronounce. It also has a strong, motivated innovation. So here, uh, you can see that we almost have 18 million customers, and we provide mobile, fixed, TV, and internet services. And uh, we're very well known for our 4G network, which is able to address 95% of the French population. Notably, our strategy is pushing us towards the FTTH space as well, as our space on uh, enterprise customers as well. So those are the two strong factors of growth within Bouygues Telecom. All right, so why Bouygues Telecom was interested in NetFlow data? Um, in 2015, we started this journey on uh, capturing uh, NetFlow data, and we first did it with uh, in-house tools, uh, notably NFSEN and FD Dump. So you can see some of the graphs are from those tools. They are still used today, partially, but um, will soon be uh, taking the way of the dodo bird once uh, DeepField is completely integrated into our network. And you can see why. We have some parts of our data that are missing, and sometimes some of the data is less than reliable, and so it'll be a, a likely uh, event that once DeepField is there with cloud intelligence, these will go away. So what did they help us do? So these first tools helped us improve our network. We uh, opted to reduce the amount of traffic on our core network by regionalizing uh, services like video on demand. This analysis of the network also allowed us to take confident steps in our efforts to regionalize services and decentralize our peering points. Although we gained some visibility on services, NetFlow data can only go so far in letting us know where each service enters the network. To go further, we had to track individual services by hand, uh, setting up the targeted service and studying it with Wireshark. Bouygues Telecom has a young customer base with, strong, with a very strong appetite for new services, and NetFlow was a good start, uh, helping us track their needs and anticipating the changes we would need to implement into our network to best serve them. So why did Bitidicum, we call ourselves Bytel, by the way. It's a lot easier. Uh, choose, choose DeepField's cloud intelligence solution. So basically, we were already able to do these parts here, um, being able to gain visibility from uh, the access all the way to the transit, peering, PNNI, and CDN points. With the three major uh, information letting us know, uh, how those services were being routed, which were NetFlow, SNMP, and BGP. Where cloud intelligence came in was helping us add that DNS flow information plus cloud genome, which allows us to be able to go a bit further. So being able to see past those points, which were basically for us a, an unknown uh, area of the network where uh, IP addresses were being masked. So this allowed us to not only see the service of Netflix as to where it was transiting, but see all the different types of Netflix traffics 
and where they were coming into our network. And it's true for all the services, Molotov TV, TF1, M6. These are all services that transit our network, but we don't always know where they come in. So Cloud Intelligence was able to help us with capacity planning. So we can now optimize our network, uh, sharing uncongested links without overdimensioning. We can uh, improve our network arch architecture by further reducing traffic transiting our core network. Our decision making is improved from our, uh, for our own managed services as well as caching, caching solutions proposed by CDNs. We can uh, better negotiate as well and anticipate changes on our transit and peering points. We are able to explain why traffic is volatile over peering points and we're able to engage in more constructive discussions with players uh, within our ecosystem. For uh, our marketing colleagues, they are better informed and able to propose pertinent services that make economic sense for the, uh, from the network point of view. So what does the deep field cloud intelligence solution within Blue Telecom look like? So just a few elements that describe the size of the solution. So we've got 2.5 terabytes of internet traffic that transit our network. We've got lots of different backbones core networks uh, that all stack on top of each other. Another point uh, is the sampling rate that we've selected. So we've selected a 1 over 2,000 sample rate. So that means that basically on the different interfaces that are being looked at, we only look at one packet for every 2,000 packets which traverse. That sampling rate can change. And obviously, uh, we've selected that to be able to get a certain level of granularity uh, without overcharging the CPUs of those routers. That represents basically 300,000 flows per second that we send out into the uh, deep field platform. We add to that the DNS flow, which basically gives us the mapping between the IP addresses and the URLs. So all of that goes into the deep field platform. And uh, on top of that, we get information from outside our network from the cloud genome. So Cloud Genome is a, basically a crawling capacity application which will go throughout uh, the internet, finding services and trying to map what they are, their IP addresses, their behavior. Cloud Genome uh, has some presence in, in Europe. We talked about it uh, uh, today. Um, and obviously, depending on where you're, you're at, services will vary. So here in France, Monotov TV is a service that uh, has a bit of volume to it. In other countries, that might not be the case. So obviously, there's a bit of learning to be had here. And that's where I think it was also a deal maker, was to see that Cloud Genome could adapt to our network and to our environment, our ecosystem. Once all that's sent to the dashboards, we've got lots of different dashboards that are available. So obviously, these are just mock-ups of what you would see. But depending on which part or department you're in, either it be engineering or marketing or end-to-end -end troubleshooting, each graph has a logic to it. Sometimes it makes it easier to share a graph with marketing that will have a certain aspect rather than another. But having that flexibility and being able to um, provide that from end-to-end -end within an operator makes a lot of sense. So we have uh, different slides that, that, uh, that show all that. One last part, the acquisition of DeepField by ALU or Nokia um, also helped um, solidify our decision um, as we've been working with ALU and Nokia for many years now, and we have very strong ties with the local teams. So that this is a particularly important part of the solution itself is uh, respecting privacy for all. So uh, Nokia and Britidicum uh, need to assure strict compliance with G GDPR. So deep field cloud intelligence is not unlike DPI. And so uh, specific information is gathered on end users and could eventually be traced back to individuals. So it was important for Nokia and Britidicum 
to take all the necessary steps to, to assure that data is pooled into sufficiently large groups to assure uh, anonymity. A mirroring of the DNS flow is also made on servers that store absolutely no data accessible, uh, only to certified people. And that, I think, is something we learned after the POC. So we did a proof of concept, which we'll see some slides from. But this was we learned about this much later on. And I think if there's any thing that can be taken away from it is to consider this right from the start, uh, making sure that you do respect the uh, security aspect uh, with the GDPR. It will save you lots of time. OK, so here's an example of what we're able to do. So this is an old graph of our Netflix data. We've got a lot more data now. <laughs> um, I think it's a very popular service that's doubled every year for the past few years. But here we are with all the traffic that's related to the Netflix AS. So we have uh, 140 gigs of data that is traversing our network. So this is very basic. And we would probably be able to do that with our internal tools as well. But uh, here we are only looking at the combined data. If we move a bit further, by adding the uh, path dimension to the query, we're a also able to show what is on net versus off net. So here we've divided the traffic into the three points of entry into our network. So we've got two points, uh, which are at Tere House 2. Or did ours do? Um, so two routers that basically take most of the traffic coming in from that peering point with uh, Netflix, and we've got an additional data here, which is coming on another router as well. So um, I was involved in that project as well. So this traffic is actually caching traffic coming into our network, but from a completely different point. So by adding that dimension to the query we're able to now see that the information does become a lot more um, understandable and rich. So we're able to make better decisions. Now, if we only look at um, the origin AS information, then we have the ability to go and look at only the caching information. So here we've got all the information which is none. So all of this information here is actually our users using our cache, so our open connect cache within our network with at Lyon. And we are also able to see the Netflix AS here, Origin AS, which then shows that cache being populated with information. Most of this information we're able to get from our open connect portal, but it's a lot better for us and we have much more granularity to be able to go through these graphs and be, being able to go look at that information for, for ourselves. And uh, then we're no longer dependent on, on Netflix. So that's about it. Uh, thank you.